Hey my quilty friends, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make the snowball quilt block. Now this is block number three of my mystery block of the month series and if you'd like to join us I'll put all the details down below in the description for you. But for now let me show you how to make it. To make your snowball block you're going to need three different fabrics and then for the A fabric we need to cut four pieces at four and a half inches by four and a half inches, one piece at seven and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches, for the B fabric, one piece at four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And for the D fabric, one piece at seven and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches. And you can find a copy of this image over on my website. I'll put a link down below. To start off with, we'll take our A fabric and our D fabric that measures seven and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches squared. Then we're going to place them right sides together. Line up all the edges on all four sides and then when we're happy place some pins in and what we're going to be doing is sewing around the entire edge. So I like to put them in this way so they're not going to get in the way. Okay, so now let's sew around our edge. I'm stitching at stitch length two. I'm using wonderful confetti thread and I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm starting right off the very edge and I'm not worrying about a back stitch. I'm gonna come off the very edge, lift my foot up and just pull it around and then carry on along the next side. And then I'll do exactly the same on all four sides. Coming right off the very edge, cutting our thread, removing our pins, and if you'd like to, you could give it a quick press to make sure it's sitting nice and flat. So now what we're going to do is cut diagonally from corner to corner on both sides, making four half square triangles. So I'm just gonna take my ruler, Place it on top and right on the corner here where the stitches intersect, I'm placing the ruler and then again on the bottom. And then I'm just double checking that it's still correct in the position at the top because it can move around and then I'll cut. And then I'll do exactly the same on this side. Double checking down the bottom at the top and then, and then again down the bottom. Okay, now we've got our four half square triangles, let's press. So now we're gonna press our seams towards our D fabric. I'm just going to set the stitches and like the name suggests, it just sets the stitches into the fabric, making the stitches stronger and helping our block lay flatter. Then I'm going to open it up, give it a finger press because we don't want any creases or folds in here. And then when I'm happy, I'll give it a press. And I'll repeat that for all four pieces. So now we're going to square our half square triangle so that they measure four and a half inches squared. Now I have a ruler that is four and a half inches squared. So all I do is I place that on top. I take that diagonal line there on my ruler and line it right up on top of my seam. And then I can trim all four sides and it's really nice and easy, but not everyone has the perfect size ruler to trim their blocks. So if you don't, what you can do is take a regular ruler. Again, we find that diagonal line, the 45 degree line, pop it on our seam but then we just have to measure four and a half inches. So I'll just count one, two, three, four and a half. And then I can see there, that's my four and a half inch mark. So I know I'm safe to trim this side because it's fitting in within the four and a half inch mark guide on that side. Then what I'll do is just turn my block around and trim it on this side. Again, my diagonal line on the seam but this time I'll have the four and a half inch line exactly on the edge of my block. So I know I'm trimming it to that four and a half inches. Then I'll turn it on the side and repeat the same process for the 
the other two sides that I have not trimmed yet. So on the diagonal line, finding that four and a half inch mark, I can see that it's there, so I will just move it over a bit. Trimming. Okay, and then trimming on this side. So as you can see, it's definitely much easier if you have the ruler for the exact size, but just work with whatever you've got. And then please trim all four squares so they measure four and a half inches squared. So now we'll just refer to our image and take all our pieces and place them so they're in the right position. Okay, so you can see that that's matching my image. And do just double check that they are sitting in the correct position. It's really easy to accidentally place one in the wrong order. And if you're using directional fabric, particularly for these pieces here, you can just make sure they're placed in the direction that you're happy with them sitting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our first row and we're going to sew them together. Then we'll do the second row and the third row. So I'll just pop these aside. So starting with our first row, I'll sew these two pieces. So I'm just going to place them right sides together and sew along this edge here. So I'll pick it up and turn it. Make sure all my edges are lined up nicely. And when I'm happy, I will just pop a couple of pins in. Pins are, it's entirely up to you if you want to use pins. If you're a beginner, I do highly recommend them. Now we're just going to sew along that edge there. Then when I've done that, I'll open it up and then I'll do exactly the same. I'll place this piece right sides together and pin and sew along that edge. Okay, so all the settings are the same as before. I'm starting right on the very edge and just sewing along, removing the pins as I need to. Coming off the very edge, cutting my thread and then I'll open it up, take my next piece and like I said, I'll place that right sides together, line up those edges, pin and sew. Coming right off the end again, cutting my thread and I'll repeat that for the remaining two rows. Let's press. So placing the rows back in the correct position, we're going to press row one so the seams are going that way, row two so the seams are going that way, and row three so the seams are going that way. And that's just so that we can nest the seams. So the first thing I will do is set the seams again. And then for this row here, we're going this way. Finger pressing and pressing. And then for this row, I'll go that way and so on. So placing our rows back in the correct position, we're going to sew them together now. So I'll take row one and place that right sides together on row two, pick it up, and then we'll just nest the seams. So what I'm going to do is we've got seams that are folded and going this way, folded and going this way. We're just going to push them up against each other, which nests them. And then I like to just open it up and check that it's creating one nice straight line like that. And then when I'm happy, I'll pop a pin in. Then I'll find the next set of seams and do exactly the same. Then I just like to put a pin in at the beginning. And at the end, making sure these edges are all lined up nicely. And if you'd like to, you could put in a few extra. I'm not going to worry about it today, but just use as many pins as you'd like to. Then we're just going to sew along the seam and then repeat this process for the third row. 
So starting at the very edge, I'm just going to sew along, removing the pins as I need to. And I'm just making sure any of the seams that I sew over are being sewn down in the direction that they were pressed. So now I'll just take my last row and do exactly the same. And if you're enjoying this video, please do hit the like button and even better the subscribe and the bell button so you don't miss another video. I'd really appreciate your support. Thanks so much. Okay, let's give our block the final press. Now let's press our seams. I'm going to press mine open, but it's a personal preference. You should press them however you'd like to at this stage. I'm just going to carefully open them and press as I go. Oh, and you can see I've accidentally pressed these ones out of the correct direction. So I'm just going to fix that. It's a little bit fiddly. So take your time. Okay, and then I'll just turn it over and give it a once over on this side because you know I love my pressing. And there we have our snowball quilt block. Isn't that cute? It's so simple yet so effective. So I hope you like the snowball quilt block. Now because of the way we made the half square triangles four at a time, we do have edges that are cut on the bias so they're extra fragile so do handle them with care. And one tip is to use a little bit of starch before you cut your fabric which just helps make that fabric a little bit stiffer and easier to work with and those edges not quite so fragile. And if you'd like to make another block, last month we made the cotton reels block, I'll put a link up above. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.